intellectuals. It start, it, its impact is primarily on intellectuals and professionals, but the impact across the Western world and probably into, um, I always like to point out that the first foreign translation of, uh, uh, of Freud's work was in Japanese. Uh, the Japanese translated him early and one of the first, uh, uh, um, uh, it might not have been the first, but one of the first uh, uh, in international psychoanalytic uh, institutes was established in Japan. Uh, um, so, so, and there is a still a very active Japanese psychoanalytic establishment. You know, it tends not to get talked about as much. I happened to have a bunch of Japanese students when I was at, at the New School um, and, and began to find out more about that. But, um, but Freud's work has a profound impact. And so that brings us to the rise of this whole interest and focus on historically um, uh, self-regulation as a, as, a, as a generating principle for, in effect, a liberation movement or a, a reorganization movement, if you want to say. And here, one of the key figures, it's easy to talk about Reich and Neil, but one of the figures that almost always gets lost, except in serious scholarship, is a, is a sort of shadowy but fascinating figure named Homer Lane. Just curious. Anyone know that name? Well, I know a few of you do. Um, okay. Some of the, the hands that went up were a couple of scholars and a couple of students of mine who have heard me talk about him. But, 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 but Homer Lane... Oh, I think I know Homer Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> well, he could have. Oh. I, I, I have a suspicion that Homer Simpson is, is, is modeled after Homer. It might well be. Uh, Homer Lane is an interesting American story in, in a very real way. He emerges sort of shadow from a shadow. He, he only lived, he died. He, he lived from uh, um, um, 19, 1875 to 1925, so he's relatively short life. But he emerges out of America, right? No clear educational back. I mean, he doesn't have. A, I mean, he's obviously educated, but he doesn't. He's not like a Harvard scholar. He's not John Dewey or, or someone like that. He's influenced profoundly by John Dewey comes out of the, what is known as the progressive education movement in America, the progressive um, uh, psychology movement in America, but becomes totally reorganized around the advent of Freud's uh, er early work, particularly in, 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 in around 1910, roughly around the time that Freud comes to America for his, his historical visit. Lane emerges and develops an extremely unique and typically American kind of view of psychoanalysis and how it applies to real people in real life and particularly to young people. And he develops an idea uh, which gets not much traction in America, but he goes to England and they love it, particularly the intellectuals. He comes to England uh, around 1913 or so and immediately attracts, first working as a lay psychoanalyst and then as a um, activist and child uh, advocacy figure and then as a, te a, a, as a leader in radical education uh, in, in England. And this is important because this is the time when Freud's ideas on education and child rearing are beginning to have profound impact in England, particularly in Europe in general, but England in, in particular. And there is a whole group of extremely uh, young and very enthusiastic, high-level writers and intellectuals and uh, doctors and educators who become very, very attached to Freud's ideas, and Lane is the first one who organizes them and unifies these ideas with an educational model. And the particular model that he presents is a model he calls self-governance, which has its roots largely in Ameri Mer very, very fundamental American concepts of democracy, and particularly John Dewey's concept of democracy. Dewey is a man well worth reading. We tend to ignore him far too much. Um, um, he's, you know, on the other hand, he also wrote 95 volumes. Um, he lived longer than any of them and kept writing on everything. But, but I guarantee you it's fascinating. For the, I mean, Dr. Coley is uh, shaking her head because she's read this stuff. If you read it, he's, he's, he, there's always something worthwhile and very, very interesting. And much of it has its own strange support of a lot of the ideas that Reich and Neil. So this is not something that Reich and Neil sort of invented out of, you know, uh, thin air. This was this was present in in, in and around um, 
the whole operation. And it should be kept in mind that, you know, there's so much always with Reich. You know, people like Darwin and Freud, but also Marx, play a real role in, in shaping a lot of Freud, uh, a lot of um, Reich's and, 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 and Neil's interests and concerns. Um, but Lane, basically, in, 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 I'm looking at the time, and I know I'm about, probably going to get the, the buzzer soon. Um, Lane uh, basically established, does a very fascinating thing. He has a group of people, some of whom you will recognize. Among his inner circle were Christopher Isherwood and Auden, the poet, and, um, and A.S. Neal, the young A.S. Neal, who was not an edu- while he taught and was a teacher, was primarily ca- had come to London because he had, met, he had recently become renowned Scottish writer. He was the heir, and a lot of people don't realize this, in England, in Britain, Neil is the heir to J.M. Berry, the writer of Peter Pan. He became, he was touted as the next great Scottish literary figure. He was, became the toast of the town, much to his father's surprise. He, Neil became a teacher, as he points out, because his father didn't think he was smart enough to be a minister. Um, um, uh, or, or really be educated, which tells you something about the, the, what they considered the, the role of the teacher. In, in, um, uh, and he failed as a teacher, he loves to point out, because he wasn't strict enough or vicious enough or, or nasty enough. Um, so Neil comes and becomes part of the circle. What Lane did before he was brought down is start a community called uh, uh, the Little Commonwealth. And what he did is he, he was very, he was also had that kind of American sort of ingenuity. He went right to the heart of the, the British penal system who was ha- where there was an amazing, it's fascinating how time doesn't change. There was a huge problem with street gangs and in, the, in those days called incorrigible delinquents, uh, street kids. And they were incarcerated in adult prisons and, and it, it was just a, a major scandal. Lane went to them with a challenge. He said, give me the worst of your worst, right? And I will, at no charge to you, run an institution and I will rehabilitate these children, these, these young, it was primarily men, although he did work with girls too. And they said, oh, you know, typical British fashion, fine, take it. <coughs> Assuming it would fail. In fact, it worked phenomenally well. Uh, and. The principle that he ran the program on, which was important for what we're talking about, was that the, the little commonwealth was run with a, on the principle of self-governance. Each per- participant, whether they were a murderer or a, a, you know, a, a, an art, well, the rule was he couldn't be an arsonist, and that was always A.S. Neal's rule. He, the only children he wouldn't allow in to the institution by necessity were art, known arsonists. You know, um, and he was always very explicit about the reason why. He said it didn't take too much sense to figure out why we can't have arsonists coming to the school. But other th- murder is okay. Murder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. murder we can deal with. Arson, arson is problematic. So barring that, we took in really the hardest cases. The rule was every member of the community of the Commonwealth, which included himself as well as any of the teachers or participants, had one vote. And all decisions were made communally including decisions on discipline. And, they were, and rules were established by the community for yeah. rules of operation and maintained by the community and discipline was meted out by the community. Now, granted, it was small. Uh, I don't think it ever exceeded more than 20 or so. Um, and interestingly, as a number of psychological tests, you know, uh, experiments have done over the years, it demonstrated that discipline was usually stricter and more adhered to and more maintained uh, by the group than, than by having a simple authoritarian judge who meted out discipline. And uh, adherence to the community and desire to remain within the community was so strong that ve- there were very, very few students or, or participants that ever failed out. And, and the success rate was phenomenally high. What brought it down quite, quite literally was a number, a- as things became more successful and gained more attention, there were a number of never supported allegations of, that, that um, uh, Lane molested uh, both boys and girls. Uh, in the two instances where he was brought up on charges, 
Um, uh, nothing was ever substantiated. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. It was never substantiated. And um, later, one of the uh, girls who was uh, involved in the case that eventually made him flee the country uh, admitted that she was uh, encouraged and basically paid off to, to 